things. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to um, bring everyone. We're going to uh, messages and to Q and A. So blessings. Here we go. <clears throat> Greetings to you. This is Gaia, Mother Earth. Of course, you're all part of this reality. Is there truly a mother of reality? Not no. Well, you are you're you are you you are the reality. <laughs> there is, yes, a, a time shift always where yes, the soul can release. The physical programming, obviously the programming is here for you to help others out of it. <laughs> Many of you come here to at least open a door uh, for others that have been trapped for such a long time. As many get pulled into fear, many also get paid, pulled into the belief systems. Of course, that doesn't always have to be fear, but where they get pulled into a cycle where they cannot leave the earth. It's like they feel like they need to be here forever. Of course, some of you come here to help with that, uh, but some souls do get trapped here. Even the weather systems here are actually energies of people here, as you probably know that already. Uh, like someone's having a bad day and all of a sudden it starts to rain. <laughs> of course, that's pretty powerful to do something like that, but... Some just do it deliberately, but others do it while you're knowing it. <laughs> so even those that go through a great deal of trauma in their life, a lot of them do go underground. They're not always realizing it, but they go into the lower realms, but they they physically go underground. <laughs> Their energy goes underground. So yes, that's when they get trapped by lower dimensional beings, and, and they, it's difficult to release from that. <laughs> So just like a plant that plants itself into the earth, humans do it too, but energetically. Mm -hmm. But there is a time of release. And like when a soul leaves the earth, uh, did they really leave? Because they leave their ghost energy here. So they come back sometimes the same person. Like you left here one way and you come back just the same. You might take a male or you might take a different gender. So there's just a lot of um, a lot of pieces to un unravel, and I believe many of you will do so. Just looking at things differently, like see who is a trap soul, who is not. Brings to you. We are the elf people, or the force people, or force beings. Uh, yes, a lot of our personalities connect to nature, connect to the trees, connect to people. You wonder where some of your personalities come from. A lot of it comes from elemental beings, especially when they're around you when you're growing up. Of course, you see us, but nobody else does. <laughs> uh, you might not always remember it. You're not always necessary to remember, but usually uh, the young child sees everything. It's almost like a psychedelic realm. <laughs> of course, the animal, the animals see it to a certain extent. <laughs> also, so our realm is the Garthian realm is kind of like a at least for fairy beings is psychedelic of course they can still show up in the physical but they live in a psychedelic realm us the elf people we can do that too but we kind of be careful of that because some do get lost there 
the reason why, why we are sh showing up here is maybe not now, but over time, our energies can be seen here. Uh, or you can feel our characteristics, especially our energies around trees and other parts of nature. We well, basically, we can talk to you, but we let you do your process. But there'll be one day when you feel our presence more prominent. You know, many are looking for Sasquatch, and that's fine, but elemental beings, not that we're the easiest to find, it, but we're everywhere. <laughs> I mean, everywhere. Like, you might be sitting on top of us. <laughs> if you're outside. <laughs> that's nice. Greetings to you. We are the dragons. Dragon collective. Greetings. Uh, you can say some of us come from a psychedelic realm, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> or are we, yes, can shift realities instantly. We see everything. We don't see into our lives completely, but we feel the vibrations, see where you're coming from. Yes, and we are here not to interfere. Uh, for the most part, <laughs> there is yes uh, a racial division on your planet, on your world. You know, the white man, the black man, Asians—they all have different types of reasons for being here. Though, I mean, they have a theme. Obviously, you're just not always seeing it. Like with uh, those that are Caucasian, are usually a part of the workforce, but kind of like always there in the in front of you know society you normally you see that um those that are black are more behind the scenes but they you know they don't always they like stealth <laughs> they don't always need to be seen some do most don't feel like it <laughs> and your asian energies is mostly the builder race <laughs> as you can see that <laughs> and it, it goes it's just meaning that there's other sides to other all races why not to for racial reasons, but why, and that's not just for color, but it's the theme of why incarnate into that. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's many more. There's, it gets more complicated, but we're just uh, kind of opening that door a little bit. So I'm also here to answer questions. Hello, blessings, greetings, Dragon Collective. While you're, while you're going down the, you know, like the, properties of different races i was thinking like a video game character with their characteristics and stats right. yeah. <laughs> you want to incarnate in you know the focus on this so there would be the best for this uh, race right here that's yes, interesting correct. very yes it's yes it's yeah there's just there's more skin color is just uh it just it has a purpose but there's so much more within it mm. all right very interesting thank you for that um uh, first this evening we have daria Hey there, Dragon Collective. Greetings. You. Greetings. So um, that was a nice set because we feel uh, the races are separated, but yes. in some way we always feel that even though they push us together. But that's kind of nicely said that everybody has their kind of beautiful place here. But anyways, yes. um, any messages from your crazy collective? And probably me on the dragon. You can skip that. <laughs> uh, you're... There are certain colors that you do tap into uh, to shift the energy fields. Like colors, this goes for everyone, but for you to connect with. Like what you wear, it sends out a vibration, especially when you go outside. The energies of it have a purpose, like a, like a tone to it. Um, it's... It's basically you do go outside as a a shadow person. I mean, you not always need to be seen, but it's like you are clearing out shadow energies, though, because <laughs> there's many of them. You probably feel there's some you're doing something behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I had a few sleep paralysis up in my ear, so. Um, yes, that's done. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so, I feel like uh, you, you talk to them. You might not physically talk to them, but your energy talks to them. Yeah. Like, what are you doing over there? What's your purpose? <laughs> There's, there are, yes, hundreds of thousands of them around. <laughs> At least in your area. Of course, that's everywhere. Hmm. Yeah, cool. I will definitely shine a light. <laughs> but uh, anyways, any other messages uh, from anyone um, on any subject? Well, there are some reptilian races that I see that you've stopped from being destroyed. Because uh, there's many of them that, yeah, it's going to be ruthful. It's just hard. Just uh, Not everybody can connect to it. Not everybody wants to see it. But there are many that have been just horrible in the universe. But like you've, there's just a lot of preserve it, preserving the energy because there is a reason, because they challenge others. Like, who else? Of course, they want to destroy certain beings, ones that are pushing you know, others to their brink. <laughs> so that's what, you know, Sometimes you need to keep some beings around there, you know, again, you know, challenging others. So we just see, yeah, not that you're protecting them all the time, but they're the beings that you've protected in your past. Mm, yeah, uh, that's so, that resonated. Yeah. No. Very and of much. course, that's very controversial. Then you're not always seeing the best light, but you don't care. And that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah. It's what, <laughs> it's, it's what is best overall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, thank you, and have a cool channeling with this group. Blessings. Blessings. Okay, thank you for that. Up next, we've got Steve. Hello, dragons. Greetings to you. Greetings to you. How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Thank you for being here. Um, I would le love for you to tap into uh, my dragon energies. Ever since I was younger, I had uh, carried the name. Uh, my very first name online uh, was drag uh, Dragon Knight uh, underscore twenty one. And then uh, here lately, I just been uh, Dragon Pleiadian, and and now the newest name is uh, Stephen the Dragon. So um, I was just wanted to get tap tap into uh, my history, uh, uh, what you can bring up, and uh, uh, appreciate it. A lot of your dragon energies come from Sirius. Think of like medieval, medieval worlds that are been medieval forever. And you've been a dragon, just like what you see in fantasy. Uh, we've been, yes, a very large dragon. It's just like, as a dragon being, you just had most of your, your high, your excitement. It's like it's being a giant dinosaur, you could say. Like a brontosaurus, but you breathe fire. <laughs> and you're also more movable. Uh, but yeah, you... There's different aspects. There are positive realities, of course, but there are also those that have been tested. But the ones that have been tested is where you get your most excitement from. Because you do interfere with wars and you do talk to you know, human collectives to try to sort things out like a giant, you know, think about a large dragon trying to sort out human problems on other planets. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just the thrill of it. It's just that's where a lot of your strength comes from. <laughs> So, of course, you're going to be connected to that because that's where you had a lot of your fun. And obviously, you still have aspects connected to that. So, blessings. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Great message. Uh, um, second, I'll just uh, I'll leave it open. Uh, just connect with my guides or uh, or what I update, maybe an astral, but doing a lot of dreaming, a lot of stuff in there. Just uh, thank you. Well, I see that you are assisting much of the. The human collective understanding, yes, it's problems. It's the, the negative influences here. Basically, the for more, yes, the alien, the positive alien, you know, I would call it invasion, but connection. Yes, you connect to many worlds that are part of a contact. And there's other realities where there's alien contact on those worlds on a daily basis for probably most of those planets, so. But you're going into this earth. In this earth, yes, you're a little bit ahead of yourself, but you are bringing that vibration with you. So you are like a an, an ancient astronaut, as you probably already know that. And possibly seeing the future will come more clear. 
when the time is right. You don't always need to see, but sometimes you see the future that's necessary. So, blessings. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Blessings. Hey, very cool. Thank you. Up next, we've got Silverclaw. Greetings, Dragon Collector. Yes, greetings. Uh, my first question is, um, I have been trying to sprout uh, seeds for my uh, side business, but they have been dying. Um, I, I want to know if this seed I'm growing right now will make it if I just keep it where it is. Well, if it's looking like it's going to survive, yeah, I'll just continue with it. But a lot of those seeds were not very good, it seems. Could, could so. you perhaps say like a, a time frame, like perhaps five, seven days before I can actually plant it? Uh, seven days. Interesting. Okay, that helps a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, my second question here. Uh, any uplifting messages for me at this time? Well, you are bringing the truth out of people, uh, especially in this class that you're in. You might not always be aware of it, but you have a, is it, I guess this is why you don't want to say something that you want to speak up because you know when there's a deception going on. You see it instantly. That's actually our tree inside of you. And so you feel like you'll speak if you need to, but a lot of times you feel like it's best not because how many really want to hear their truth? It'd be nice if they would want to, but but you are healing the energies around you. You probably feel that. They're just very, you're not always feeling welcome because they don't want to be healed, <laughs> but you're there anyway. So you're there for a reason, though. <laughs> so, blessings. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes. Hey, thank you. Yeah, very true. If people wanted to hear their own truth, you know, honest people would be more popular. Yeah, it'd be a different world. Yes. Oh well, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for that. Up next, we've got Yuli. Greetings. Um, I today I would like to ask um, if it's any messages for me regarding my health. I mean, struggling this week, so I just wondering if it's anything that you know you guys can see about me. Well, yes, there's been some lower energies, as you know. Uh, they don't want you to you, to speak, but they're going after your throat chakra, is what it seems. Mm -hmm. So, you know, candle energy, you've probably done this already, but uh, it just feels like it's this week because the earth is going into a holiday season. So it has something to do. I hope so. I mean, it's really with my eyes, and that's one of the that's very scary things. So I was like, well, what? I eyes. know it's energetic, but I don't know what it is. That'll clear out. I feel like you're just seeing too much, is what I feel. With your en energy field, it, it will clear. I hope so. Thank you so much. And uh, my other question will be regarding um, with my daughter, if it's possible, um, any messages for her. She's been struggling a lot with work. He re she recently started this job and everything turned into a very disappointment disappointing time for her and now um you know she have a lot going on and her emotional state of mind i kind of worry about that i just want wondering if it's any messages for her at this time well yeah she's very sensitive due to her situation then she goes to work and feels more problems there but she feels like also she needs to solve other people's problems too mm-hmm and that's that's the thing she has to focus that's that's why she's there to learn how to focus on herself it's very hard for her to do that because she gets i believe sometimes a little bit gossipy a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah she gets pulled into other people's lives and she's trying to be a good samaritan and all that and that's what she needs to pull back on <laughs> do you see her like getting um, getting moved from that job yeah, uh, eventually, yeah, but it feels like she needs to be there right now. Right, that's what for I, her that's growth. What, it's like it's, medicine. <laughs> it's like she because for that reason she's thinking that they're gonna let her go today, tomorrow, and no, for some reason not. they haven't. You know? No, they're not going to. That's her <laughs> thinking that. That's her paranoia saying that. Exactly. Well, thank you so much they're and blessings. Gonna, they're not gonna let her go unless she quits. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought so. Well, greetings. I mean, <laughs> blessings. Yeah, <thank laughs> Bye. You. Energies, yes. bye. Yeah, thank you for that. Up next, we've got Tristan. Hi, greetings, Dragon Collective. Greetings to you. I must say, I have the most 
utmost respect and fear for you guys. So, <laughs> oh, we are like teddy bears with wings. <laughs> teddy bears and, and claw and claws and we, we yes. fire. Yes. <laughs> well, there are cat dragons too. They can get kind of affection in. Be too affectionate sometimes. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take those. No. <laughs> um, I have a question. About, two questions about dreams. Um, the first dream was, um, I was. It was the end of a weekend. I hadn't done any of the work I was supposed to do, and the work involved something like counting beans, which means like actual counting little. I have an impression of little little bits and pieces that I had to kind of figure out, and I hadn't done it. And I was feeling guilty. And then I left to go back home, and I ended up in a Handmaid's Tale reality. And and so I was washing myself kind of ritually um, because I saw some handmaid, handmaids coming towards me, and I'd forgotten how they greet. So I was going, oh, my God, okay, I hope they don't notice that I'm not from here. Um, so And that was the end of it. So uh, what was that about? Do you have any comments on that? Well, it seems like it's more of a Jack and the Beanstalk type of reality you think you are from. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, so yeah, you were. It looks like there you were peeking into that reality, and you didn't want anybody to know who you were. But you're, yeah, going more into yourself. <laughs> it seems. Okay. So, because you wanted to be treated like everybody else there, <laughs> but yeah, it's like you walked into another version of you. Let's put it oh, that cool. way. Okay, just does a tourist. Okay. And there's I another know. version of you out there that's kind of lazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this this my, my my version is pretty lazy too. So <laughs> yeah, I just want to talk to people all day, which is nothing wrong with that. But nothing wrong with that. No. Get very very well done, like ever. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I could I could do that. Um, <laughs> my my other uh, um, uh, the other dream was about. Um, this was just last night and it was um i was at a, a rap party for a film and um i don't work in film but that's what it was and then um it's the name was the dark lord a dark lord showed up and then slipped into um somebody else and then i was it was kind of within then but in a different realm and then i was tasked or gave myself the task to kind of find out um wh who he was or where he was and get him out of this first person before the party ended. And I found, I found him in this, in this giant. And I said, oh, that's him, that's him. But no one kind of paid attention. Mm -hmm. and, and then, so my question is, why, who was that? And why did I need to get him out of that person before it, before it ended? Well, th that was like a, a Lord of the Rings type of reality, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and you were kind of like a, a wizard type of, like part-time wizard. <laughs> Like you really weren't sure about your own magic, but yeah. Well, basically, I believe that person was being possessed, mm -hmm. and uh, that was like a test for you to see if you can retrieve that soul out, you know, oh. remove it. That's what at least it seems like. Well, because if it is there for a long time, it can be there permanently, so it wasn't okay. meant to be there. So, <laughs> can can you see if I passed the test? I believe so, but it was really at the edge of that. <laughs> I think you got help too. There's no way you, it was like way beyond your understanding. Okay. Uh, like there's three others. Some of them were like midget type of beings, <laughs> so uh -huh. or friends. <laughs> so okay. yeah, it feels like you got help though. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Blessings. Okay. Thank you. Up next, we've got Michael. Uh, greetings. Greetings to you. I was wanting to know as much as you could tell me about my brother. Uh, he's doesn't. I don't. I don't know where he's at. How how is he? And I don't know if he's with his uh, girlfriend, which is a dark Syrian, like a witchcraft. Uh, I don't know if he's back with her, but of course he's on the wrong, the wrong track. And mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do worry about him and care for him, of course, always. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, if you can, anything that you can pick up or tell well, me. Well, according to him, he's on the right track. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And I believe he is. 
in contact with her, but it's not clear if they're on the best of terms at this time. <laughs> so they are... I don't think you can let her go. They can't let it go. To each other. They kind of fuel each other's drama. Yeah, don't she have a spell on him or something? Well, they kind of put spells on each other. <laughs> oh, I mean, he's been a troll and he's been a, she's been a witch. So... It's like a, an off kind of love connection there. <laughs> it's a karmic connection they can't seem to break out of. Mm. So. But how he is, he's just very arrogant of himself, from what I can see. Oh, like mm-hmm. he's like on top of the world. He knows everything. Which is a that's, that's him. That's him. <laughs> yeah, some energy or drugs or anything around him. Something. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> nothing. But yeah, he's he's not exactly doing well health wise, as you probably already know that. Yeah, his mental health and his, even his body is kind of declining on him. So he is kind of pulling out of his body now. He's still going to hang around for a while, but it's not clear for how much longer though. <laughs> it's like his purpose is not really serving a purpose as he was intended to. So I believe alcohol and drugs kind of messed that up. I can see. Yeah, he's he's a he's wasted a life for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, but he's yeah, but that's you're there to help him with that to some degree. <laughs> yeah. So. And my second question, um, what's the the latest and greatest with uh, my SS in the SSP? Well, yeah, that's where you get a lot of your adventure excitement from it's like an adrenaline rush uh there are some feline beings around you at this time it does feel like you're very under much undercover uh but yeah there's like life and death type of situations going on i feel like you're very connected to a sun at least in some reality one of these realities where the sun's about to explode it hasn't exploded yet but it's going to (laughs) uh but yeah, it's like there's a war around a, a sun that's about to fall apart. <clears throat> so I can see why you're holding on. You can connect to those realities for easy. <laughs> those are fun. <clears throat> so that's all I have to say on that. <laughs> okay. So well, 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 thank you so much. Blessings. Blessings, blessings. Okay, very cool. Thank you for that. Up next, we've got Galicia. Greetings, dragons. Um, All right, since we have the dragons, perhaps my question will be appropriate. And also with uh, Ivan's recent messages, he was tapping into a lot of the, you know, Salem witch trials and things like that. Um, I received a few days before Halloween, I'd received a a message from the Pleiadians channel from Ivan. And I think it really opened something for me. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't planning on it. But on Halloween night, just me by myself at home, I ended up doing like a whole, uh, I don't even know what to call it. I think I tapped into my witchy self, but just new energy healing, like my hands moving, crying, releasing all kinds of stuff. Like um, it's all, you know, I videotape it because I was doing it to music. Mm-hmm. And um, it felt really powerful, and I wonder if you could tap into that and um, let me know anything that maybe you see that I was doing, especially since it was on a significant kind of day. And um, cool. and also, like, when I was crying, I kind of just collapsed down. Um, it felt kind of with the feminine, but just anything you could tell me about that. Well, Salem, Massachusetts, I believe you were there. But I oh. feel like you were very young, but you knew what was going on. You're old enough. I believe like in your teen years, uh, you were protected from it, but you definitely felt what was happening there. <laughs> it was yeah. quite terrifying. So I believe those tears are just, you know, for those that are, that got pulled into that situation. Mm-hmm. And yes, there's a lot, there's still a lot more that has not been uncovered from that, that time period. So I feel like you are healing that area and healing yourself, of course. Yeah, it seems recently that a lot of the messages uh, I recently just connected with this group have been coming up with uh, sacrifice, but Mm -hmm. usually, and it's interesting because there'll be different, you know, different messages from different beings, but, oh, and you were a part of sacrifice, but I see you were trying to stop it. 
So it's just interesting, like that that keeps coming through. Was was I actually sacrificed like several times or? Oh, yes. Yeah, I feel well, like a lot of trauma in the physical, like. There, there's a Mayan connection you have during our darker uh-huh. period. Yeah. And that's like some people that get pulled into relationships that are bad and they go through cycles of reincarnating the same cycle. But you mm-hmm. got sacrificed several times. Like you're the one that they chose to sacrifice. <laughs> there was three or at least eight live times at least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel um, like I feel yeah. that. It's probably maybe more than a lifetime. I mean, eight is eight should be enough, but there might be more than that. <laughs> Did they choose me because of like my psychic abilities and things like intuition well, with that? Well, they chose you because you've been through it before. <laughs> it's like you put out that energy, it's almost like you're attracting it. <laughs> it's huh? like, don't choose me, but then choose me. <laughs> Something like that. They just felt like you're the one to sacrifice. <laughs> they just can feel it. But yeah, you can say it's your abilities, but just. And just because others have saw your power in the past, yeah, you're going through like a, a loop, a pattern that you, you finally broke out of. Yeah. yeah. So another reason why you're careful of who's around you in this lifetime, at least that's like, at least right now, I see that. Yeah, I am. I I've... thought you're going to be not that you're going to be sacrificed or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Um. And then my second question, uh, I had a pretty wild dream i don't usually dream of things like this but i'm just going to give a little brief synopsis of it uh basically i'm in this movie theater type of room or a classroom type of setting i'm sitting in the top row and it's a dream inside of a dream um a girl next to me basically that as if you would be watching a movie or something but all of a sudden i start going into a dream inside of the dream where there's some kind of snakes or reptilians and I turn to the girl and I keep saying, wake me up, wake me up, wake me up. And she actually did. So I never p- fell asleep into there. Then I get up, I'm talking with some people. And all of a sudden, a young guy comes up to me with really blonde hair. He looked maybe in his 20s. And he puts a green chip on the top of my ear. It looked like one of those, I don't know what they're called. You put them on cows sometimes where you like clip it from both sides. It was on my top earlobe. It was like a lime green color. And he said to me, because I didn't know if it was positive or negative, but he's like, now you're going to know everything. And then I woke up (laughs) in this real life. If there's anything that you could pick up on that. So, yeah, you're going to the consciousness of other people. So it's like, uh, not exactly is a movie called Inception. I don't think you're doing that, but you were going into someone else's consciousness. And you were going to other people's. This is something like something that you do. I believe Mm -hmm. just the, the green clip is just a, I believe it was there to actually break you out of it. So that person was more like a, I get like a den master energy from him. I believe it was there to help you out of that because you were getting stuck in other people's realities because it's because you're almost like Alice Wonderland. You're you're mm-hmm. just diving in. You forgot that you can do this. I believe mm-hmm. now you're starting to remember. So it's like when people feel like they they feel all this energy, low vibrations, but it's not theirs. Mm-hmm. And so that's what you're going into other people's consciousness. Now, why yes. you're there is not clear, but mm-hmm. it's something that you can do, though. <laughs> yeah, the chip was the main thing that I was like, because I don't remember ever having a dream where, like, you know, something was clipped to my ear or something. That was, but... I don't believe it was, it was, it was that was just to take you oh, out possibly. of it. I believe it was, it was there to wake yeah. you up. Okay. That was there to bring you out of the trance because you're going yeah. deep. Yeah, I could dream I feel like, like yeah, you crazy. Lost con- it feels like you lost control over where you're going. <laughs> so that person did that just to zap you out of there just to free yourself of it mm-hmm. um, yeah so. i think i was in like a control room almost or something of realities yeah. i don't know <laughs> yeah. all yeah. right yeah. wonderful yes. blessings thank you very much blessings dragons blessings thank you okay very interesting up next we've got brian greetings dragons thanks for being here yes greetings to you so uh any messages for me from your collective There is some astral healing that you're doing. Well, I feel, yeah, so a lot, a lot of times, it feels like sometimes you're trying to pull out of this reality because I feel some men in black energy around you. So I guess you're been looking at other things astrally. You might not be aware of it, but it feels well, like I'm definitely you're, sleeping more. So you're looking for <laughs> other things to bring into this. It's like, it's, think of like the astral realm. There's a, 
the Mexican border. <laughs> okay. And you've been trying to cross it. <laughs> And being bringing information from astral here, but you've been denied that over and over again. <laughs> but you've been trying. <laughs> uh, but some things you can bring over, though. That okay. <laughs> so. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, well, thank you for that. Sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of, uh, lately, my dreams have definitely been like hard to remember. Well, I do but... see a lot in Anaki energies. So I feel like there's some past there. Where it got pretty intense in your previous incarnations, I feel like you're still healing that. <laughs> yeah, it's taken a while to come through. It well, uh, for my second question, any messages from my higher self? Uh, it looks like you're reconciling with a lot of beings that you just dis dis distrusted or just dis didn't trust <laughs> at all. I believe a lot of this is an astral. So, um, it's just that, yeah, you come here to make peace with a lot of beings. Okay. Astrally, maybe physically, but mostly astrally. It's like you're, Interesting. On, you're like you're on the forbidden planet. Now, you have been an astronaut being left here <laughs> or crash landed here <laughs> in the past. Is you have your, your ship and you're just wondering, you know, even you see primitive humans walking around here. Okay. So your deep past. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that does exist. <laughs> Interesting. I believe you're going to have to tap into that. You're a Palladian being, yo. Yeah, Kinda okay. Like lost in space. I feel the lost in space energy there. Oh, that <laughs> definitely resonates. <laughs> yeah, so it seems like you sometimes find your place. You find your way here sometimes when you have to sort out the situation. Okay. So, yes, so blessings. Blessings to you. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we've got Hazel's questions. Her first question, she says, Hello, Dragon Collective. Welcome and thank you for being here. Okay. In Astral, I was in the lower level of a dilapidated building that had a maze design. I was confronted by a woman driving a five-pronged zero-turn forklift. She chased me and cornered me and sadly stabbed me with the forks. Do you have any thoughts on who she is? Her eyes look familiar to me. Well, it was an elitist energy. It was an elitist realm. Those eyes, it feels like Madonna, you know, the singer. It feels like she was there. <laughs> she might have been the old lady. Her energies are definitely there. So it looks like you went into a realm that well, that you needed to be in. It's always like it went down a trap door, like asked you know, through your work, it went through a trap, but you needed to go to see that. So so you didn't really die, obviously. You just got kicked out of that realm. <laughs> they needed to, they needed to kill you at, to, to snap you out of that place. That's all. You didn't really die, but you know. So, blessings. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Her second question. She says, My 12 year old child self gifted me with a white dragon egg. Do you have any thoughts on what she was intending with this gift and anything I should be listening to for, uh, for now from this dragon being thank you and many blessings of course it's also yes protection energy but it does seem like you're going to go into realms a little bit deeper than what you're used to but you can handle it it's like you have a shield around you maybe it'll be a dragon fire you know some dragon beings might shoot fire at you but you have your shield so you're protected by it but it feels like there's something your soul agreement you're here to see also like why you even came here like the the beings uh I do feel like there's energy of like the originals. That sounds like kind of like a plain term, but the the, the early beings that are here on Earth, you probably feel like you have some kind of connection to the early humanity, and I believe you all are you will connect to them eventually. I, f I just feel like there's a lot of white energies around them. They just, but they're usually hidden for for obvious reasons. They don't want to. Sh they have to let humanity play things out. <laughs> So, right. Blessings. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we've got Crystal. Greetings, Dragon Collective. Yes, greetings to you. Any messages for me? Uh, just more confidence in your abilities. I believe that you've already got this message about your connection to Yeshua. I believe sometimes you worry about being sacrificed. I guess sacrifice is a big theme here for some people. Uh, you have been sacrificed, you've been exploited in your past life uh, for your power. So some, that's why you're a little bit hesitant to use your own abilities because sometimes others abuse your darkness. 
<laughs> but you are going in the right path. You are protecting yourself. So. Well, I hope I'm healing some of that energy for being yeah, good. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't, I, I did not know I had a connection to Yeshua. This is my first time hearing it. Oh, okay. Yes, I feel like you've heard it some, maybe not, but I can see it mm. quite clearly. Yeah. Well, then that, I guess this would be my second question. What is my connection to Yeshua? Uh, saying and doing things that are against the collective narrative. Mm. And eventually being thrown in jail or sacrificed. <laughs> mm. I see your energy around the dark ages. <laughs> I believe you're about burning book, the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you burned that several times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they didn't go very well. Some monks you didn't trust basically went against the Catholic Church, I feel. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's more, you're very radical in your past. <laughs> you probably feel some of that now, but you obviously know it's going down. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, you, you just went against religion <laughs> when you knew it was all not to be trusted anymore. <laughs> It's like he immediately went against it as soon as you realized it was just a, a scam. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. I guess that's why Jesus is there. For <laughs> Protect yeah. you as you go after them. Because <laughs> it feels like you knew what was, of course, when you grew up, you weren't part of the program, obviously. Mm -hmm. But as you got older, you sensed more that was, more that was going on mm -hmm. through your intuition. And you're just seeing more deception after deception. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. definitely. No, I do feel a little road these days. I'm just trying yes. to tame myself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Myself. This, this is the tame. Yeah, taming is good. <laughs> yeah, because uh, my joke is uh, me and my cohort, we're going to make it to the end of the credits. <laughs> exactly. Because you know, a, a lot of times that did not happen. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, there was many lifetimes times for that. Yeah, you're nowhere near the credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just one lifetime of just doing going against you. Martin Luther, I don't know if you're yeah. aware. Yep. Yeah, you knew him. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot of sense. I feel like you inspired some of this, like, hey Martin, let's just go let's go after these people. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> oh, so this is why he broke off and did his own religion. Yeah, he got pressured. I mean, you were one, I feel like you're one of the people that are like, yeah, let's go against this. So, yeah. But he was more of the the leader of that, but you're behind him 100%. <laughs> you know, I always tell myself, I, I never understood why I went to law school until this year. Yes. Because <laughs> it makes my mouth even bigger. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, you have, that was for knowledge. They so you know what you're talking about, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Use it in a different way. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to be smart in this lifetime. Yes. <laughs> Not even doing good. Doing Thank really you. good. You're doing really good. Yeah. Yeah. We're Keep me and Annie alive. Exactly. Yeah. So, this time yeah. around. Yes. All right. All right. Let's see. Thanks. Hey, very cool. Thank you for that. Up next, we've got Liz. Hello. Yes, greetings. Greetings. Um, would you uh, tell me what, how are the energies for Texas to move to Texas? Well, nothing is perfect. Uh, there, there is a lot of. I mean, you can say Texas is kind of under attack in some form, like with the the border. Um, it's, I mean, I feel like if you move there, it'll be fine, but it's just a lot of stress in that state, as you know, because it is rebelling against the system. <laughs> and it's yes, painful well, at the same time. At the same time. Well, I was going to move to Ohio, but then all of a sudden it is Texas, not Ohio. So maybe they need me over there? Yes, you are needed there then, yes. No, it will be fine. You just feel a lot of stress energies. Every now and then, probably more in California, actually, because <clears throat> California yeah, is going through than... the system. It is the system. It's yeah. Going against it. So no, yeah, you, you moved out there. It'll be fine. Obviously, you're needed there. I. It seems like it was last minute, though. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of interesting why you're even drawing 
why they wanted you in a whole Ohio to begin with, but. <laughs> yes, I don't understand that too. It's all of a sudden, uh, well, you know. The vibe I feel is like it was always Texas in the long run, but it's like you need to put your energies in Ohio for a little bit, see how it feels. And mm -hmm. I believe there's going to be Texas no matter what. And I can pick up on it. All right. Yes, we found the buyer here. It's just haven't found the right place to go with Texas yet. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, you know, there, it didn't. Uh, is there a certain like, place? You're going to get yeah, to... what area to go, like near Fort Worth or, or more oh. in the middle of the country or well, Dallas area? Um, Austin actually has a better energy right now. That's entirely up to you. <laughs> hmm. It's where it's all happening. Austin has everything. It's like almost like the LA of California, but without all the mm -hmm. all that. <laughs> oh, but you, yeah, whatever you feel. But Austin seems like because my husband is kind of uh, said we can go anywhere, but that Austin. <laughs> no. Well, it's entirely up to you. But Austin seems to be a very good place. Houston um, has a lot Austin. of corruption around it. Houston mm -hmm. is very well. Austin has a more higher frequency. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, I sense that too. Yeah, it's very hot. It's controversial, of course, it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But it's it is kind of leading the country in a, a more positive direction. But it's entirely up to you, of course. Uh, interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. feel it out. Yeah. Well, Austin's where it's all happening. <laughs> There's other places, yeah. but San Antonio is okay. It's kind of a sleepy area. And mm -hmm. Dallas is a lot of corruption there. <laughs> I mean, you can live there, probably fine, but you'll feel low vibrations. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that either. It's a lot of corruption there. Uh, Houston's worse. <laughs> yeah. So. Very good. I sense that way too. Yes. Huh. Yeah. So what's my relationship with the dragons? I felt like um, I felt very like protected by by your collective. Well, that's I believe it had to do with understanding the reptilian mind, reptilian energies, and so knowing the the dragon because a lot of reptilian beings are actually afraid of a dragon frequency. Of course, some of them are dragons to a certain degree, but not the full dragon vibration. Was, mm -hmm. I believe you just trusted dragons in your past, and you just understood them to us enough mm -hmm. where you felt safe with your life, you can say. <laughs> so, and there's a dragon say, just trust your instincts and where to live. I still feel right. awesome. <laughs> Austin, yes. Sorry, that's you, of course. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Up next, I've got Chrissy's questions. First question. There was a craft over the house here at my parents. I felt like I was taken on. Can you see what the craft interior looked like and what they were doing to me? Well, I felt like it was Palladian energies, but also Mantis beings. I felt like it was an upgrade, but also... I had more to do about your son than it did you. I mean, he gave you some upgrades, but maybe more of your son was being enhanced, you know, so he can handle for his health. So he handled the Earth's energies. He's having trouble with it, as you know. He's getting better, but he's still very sensitive. So, so what's this? Hey, thank you for that. Her second question, I felt a lot of activity with the mantis, grays, insectoids, and some aquatic reptoids around. Can you scan my energy and see what species DNA is most prominent? Well, the gray, uh, actually it would be, for you, be more reptilian, but more of a positive reptilian energy. But the grays, you've been a mother of gray beings. You've taught many of them to behave, not to just, you know, this is not to take over planets and things like that. You taught them to be, you know, know their manners, know their powers, ability. They say I was quite controversial, uh, depending on the world you're on. But, but yes, you're very. You, you, I feel you're, you know, you're, you're making sure that they don't get misguided, <laughs> as many easily do. So, so. 
Blessings. Thank you. Up next, we've got James. James, you there? Hello. Yes, please. Yeah. Hang on, my uh, dragon connections. Uh... Oh, you have like uh, dragon connections in Orion. Those worlds are, you can say they're primitive worlds, more like the fantasy realms. The elves and things like that. It's just, you've been a dragon human also, like a humanoid dragon being, dragon head, but human, you know, human white can, five fingers, things like that. Uh, we've, yeah, as captains of sh uh, ships or even collectives um, in Orion. So the, the, the dragon energy is still very strong with you, from what I can say. So, blessings. Oh, am I connecting more with uh, London or Paris or Rome lately? Uh, only thing I've seen about Rome because of the Vatican. I feel like you have a very strong connection to the Vatican. Like before it was built, um, like your energy is like an ancestry of the Vatican. Um, because you, your energy, I feel, has like been connected to the secret societies in your past, which is connected to Rome. So you've been part of Roman royalty, you can say. And the French energies, yes, because there's something going on in France. I'm not saying what it is, but something behind the scenes. I believe it has to do with the Muslim situation going on there. So, that's nice. As you can. Okay, thank you. Blessings. Up next, we've got Annie. Hi, greetings. Thanks, Tim. Um, do you have any messages for me? Just a general. Uh, I do see you as a prominent shapeshifter in other realities. Uh, there are worlds where you found you enjoyed the planet so much you just shapeshifted into their collective and lived within, among them for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with one of those like a Pleiadian world, as you've had a lot of times where you've been a reptilian being, but you've connected to a Pleiadian world and shapeshifted as them and just lived among them. So uh, I believe they had a couple of lifetimes like that. It was different species of beings. They're not sure what the other ones were. So. Okay. So was I like a, a good rep reptilian or yeah. what kind of? Okay. Yeah, just curious. Just, just trying to figure your place in the universe, you can say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying. <laughs> Never ending. <Okay. laughs> Never ending, is it? <laughs> it shouldn't be an end to that. It always should be something new that you're trying to discover about yourself. What you're yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and my second question is, um, what is my connection to the um, Elohim? I feel like I'm connected with them. That's one of your found, one of your earlier incarnations before you took on challenging lifetimes. Because you've had challenging lifetimes before, but the Elohim vibration is there for your Earth lifetimes. So you usually okay. bring in of some of the Elohim frequency to remember who you are. To you know, remember what's right, like it connects to your spirit guide energies. So for you to stay out of harm's way, not get pulled into you know the wrong crowds, things like that. Because like you've had a lot of times in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and you never got pulled into the, you know, you just had family, kids, and you didn't get pulled into all the negativity that's going on there. For example, that's one example. Oh, just to keep okay. <laughs> yeah, I kind of felt like I was connected to them and I, I kind of like yes. knew them. So that's why I was like, how do I, what's that about? Because I didn't really understand that. Well, you're also connected to witchcraft in your past. Too. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah. I could see deep, that. <laughs> very, very extremely deep. Uh, I, really? believe that's why Elohim, <laughs> I believe that's why the Elohim is there. It's like, remember uh, when you were good? <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some questionable lifetimes in your past. Uh, that was part of the Druids. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I did feel like at one point I was pretty, like, dark. <laughs> that, yeah, that was Druid incarnation. But they didn't see themselves as dark. They just felt that they 
had higher knowledge, which they you still do okay. now. So that is part of a lot of the elite energy that's happening here too. They just feel oh, like okay. they know everything. They just feel like they have, they know yeah. this, you know, yeah, if somebody dies, like, doesn't matter. We're, there's a higher purpose to everything. So. <sighs> okay, that would explain it. Yeah, I pretty much understand them, which is kind of funny. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just have an inner knowing because you've been part of them, yes. <laughs> yes, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> So, okay, thank you. Blessings. Okay, thank you. Up next, we've got Amanda. Hi there. How are you, Dragon Collective? Lovely yeah. to connect. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, my first question would be, I would like if you would shed some light on my Avalon connection because I felt very connected to Merlin over the last couple of years and um, I have visions of myself being in certain areas of the wor world at monoliths and things and I was just curious if you may please shed some light on that for me. Well, yeah, the sacred land, sacred sites. Mm. We feel like you're... I believe some of the sites you were actually born on, literally conceived burned. and born, or burned. Yeah. <laughs> I feel well, born, but yeah, they're probably burned eventually. <laughs> like you're uh -huh. born here and then you die here. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Wow. But yeah, there are some places that you've been connected to that are, so you're going, yeah, well, because Merlin's energy is on those places. That's why. Mm. So... Merlin is directing you to these places to heal. So, yeah, these sacred sites that you feel connected to, yeah, just allow them to speak to you. Okay. Uh, yes, as well as one where it was hanging. Uh, yeah, because you usually do kind of push the, mm. as you know. Yes, I do. <laughs> well, it shows that you're teaching uh, children or at least the future generation. Like, you leave your knowledge with other people before you, you know, die. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay. you, you knew when you were going to die before you died. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I've yeah, I can I can agree with that in this incarnation as well. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. Um. Ten years ago, I was shown how I was going to die and where I would be. Mm. That's not always fully for certain, but it's a possibility. Yeah. Mm, that's right. Yeah, potential timeline, right? Yeah. Right. Um, thank you so much. Um, my second question is uh, just any messages that the Dragon Collective has for me, please, on my journey. Well, you came here to protect, you say, the secret sites, but also the people that are not understanding them. So mm. like with the pyramids, so many people incarnate to protect the pyramids around the world uh, of yeah. course they have words there left to just that but yeah there's a sacred knowledge here that the world's not ready to do. it's like there's knowledge here obviously it can be revealed but is the world really ready for it no not really now parts of it yes but not all of it that's why people are, have trouble with intuition and psychic connections all because it's too much from the handle the majority of the collective they're terrified of it. Mm. Obviously, they say something different, but in truth, they're terrified of it. <laughs> it's like they yeah, can't out of the back. <laughs> yes, yes. And that can happen any time, but humanity is just, it's like they, you can tell them what's inside the presence, what's inside the gift. Yeah, it's wrapped up, but they don't want to see it. <laughs> mm, okay. So, not yet. I see my thing. So okay, beautiful. I just see a lot of sacred energies that you're connected to. Yeah, it has been Stonehenge predominantly. So um, yeah. Egypt since I was a little girl, but um, then it was uh, Machu Picchu. And then after that, um, it was uh, Europe and Stonehenge. So, yeah. There's a Archangel Michael I have a strong connection to also. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Blessings. Blessing, blessings. Okay, thank you. Up next, I've got Marvin's questions. 
His first question, he says, what are the sun being or beings trying to download to me and how can I communicate with them or a uh, representative of them? This is knowledge of the Anunnaki. As you know, like with Anki, I believe he knew Anki pretty close. Uh, they didn't always get along because he's, Marvin had another way of looking at things. And um, But yeah, this connection, Anunnaki has been kind of like he's been part of the family but sometimes a distant family member uh certain certain families that are knocking <laughs> um we'll just leave it at that That's just... okay thank you uh second question dragon uh dragon being welcome and hugs can you or anu give me ways to unlock my chakra like Taoist meditation or lost keys of solomon needing a direction of which can knowledge of which can knowledge they left to awaken it, the true inner God. Well, he has a connection to the tree of life. So he connects to the true tree of life. You can see the energies of the tree of life go through his chakras. And he also has a connection to uh, the bat collective. That's probably out there, but yeah, it's kind of like a mysterious, the bat people are, yeah, kind of like a mystery energy. But he's very connected to, um, as you know, esoteric energies. So, uh, this, of course, the sun, sun god energy, it also help him uh, figure out his path. So, blessings. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Up next, I've got Blue's questions. Blue's first question she says, Hello, Dragon Collective. Thank you for visiting with us. Yes. Strong evil forces have attacked me lately. Being how you're a very powerful and balancing force, can you please share advice on how I can best handle these attacks? A lot of that evil energy is coming from uh, a male presence. I would say a, a reptilian energy from another realm. It works through people. It's like a reptilian collective. It is connected to a darker, you know, elite, a woman audio energy, actually. That's what I'm getting from that. Yeah, it just has a vendetta against you because you can shift reality to more of a positive frequency. So they're just there to, yeah, shut you down. Um, there's so at least eight of them, at least. <laughs> at least what I can see here. Yeah, they, they've seemed like they've calmed down a little bit, but they're still around them. So, blessings. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Her second question. The theme of inverted female energies, the one who will attempt to control and destroy the sacred masculines, has been heavy lately. It's been placed in front of me for a reason. Can you explain that more and how I can help transmute that darkness so the sacred masculines can be freed? Thank you, Dragons. Well, that was a little bit complicated because a lot of the masculine, like a lot of the teachers, the male teachers, have been manipulated to you know, calm down, you know, to lower their frequency, to be a, you know, be submissive, be part of the system. So, um, with her energy, for, yeah, that's very, is extremely complicated. You know, I don't know if I even have an answer for something like that. Because <laughs> with her energy, just, she knows her power. So, just what she puts out into the universe, what she feels that could stop it, but it's, because it's everywhere. It's almost like a cancer across the planet. It's because of the masculine has been turned again. It's being demasculized, as she knows, um, through was it the social justice energies? I mean, which is very reptilian, actually. <laughs> the social justice, yeah, they're just taking the female and weaponizing them. Uh, female reptilian beings are very destructive, and that's a lot of where this is coming from. And they are from Orion. They're from other places, but I believe more from Orion. They're like gypsies. They're, yeah, it's a spell. It's a massive spell uh, to, yeah, to destroy the world. But they won't be as successful. But yeah, they're just trying to disconnect masculine and all, turn it off. So, blessings. All right. Hey, the blessings, Rachel. Thank you. Um, up next, I, we've got April. Greetings. Yes, Thank you for coming in. Um, could you tell me more about my ancient dragon connections? I know I come from an ancient dragon family and we've incarnated a few times. I just wanted to dig more into that. Thank you. 
Oh, there's an Anunnaki connection. Anunnaki worlds is a dragon being. Okay. Uh, there's also some some Syrian energies, but it was mostly Anunnaki. Where I can pick up on. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and any messages? Uh, you're going more to a positive timeline. There's still a lot that you're healing from the past. Feels like there's like a wasted guys are showing like a box, a treasure box that you're holding on to that has to be released. Um, really? Past life connection. Yeah, you're not ready to let it go just yet. Like memories. And mm -hmm. I'll help you enjoy things more as you go forward. It's just that time yet, it seems. <laughs> a couple more years, I was for the peace, peaceful life yeah, reaches me. As long as, as long as you need, yeah. Okay. You know, what you need. So, yes. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Up next, we've got Ketelin. Hello, dragons. Um, yes. Last uh, summer, I asked someone um, uh, about the mandating in Canada the the stink. Uh, and uh, they said it's highly uh, improbable. Now uh, uh, it's mandatory in Canada, and um, I'm a little bit confused. But what is it that's mandatory right now? In Canada. What is it? What, what is, is it? it? The, 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 the stink. The, the syringe. Making everybody take it? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think you have to take it, though. <laughs> It feels like Sorry? you still. It feels like you still have a way of not taking it. Well, that means yeah, Canada is. You, you can't. You can't travel. So we're like locked here. It's like a, a first was the Berlin Wall. Now it's can, Canadian yeah. Wall. Oh well, that's that's a lot of places right now. Yes. Well, it's not mandatory that everyone has to take it, but yes, it's. Well, that's so, they still have the choice of that, yeah. So, yeah, that means a lot. Those that put that wall in will eventually lose their uh, their power one day. <laughs> so, so the car so, karma will come back to them eventually. Uh, okay, okay. So, so this is where you see it's going. In well, they'll they'll, they'll calm it down eventually, but they're gonna they're gonna do this as long as they can, yeah. Uh, Maybe okay, two okay. more, three more years, possibly. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Um, second question. Uh, I work a lot with uh, self awareness, uh, and um, in in this with this type of uh, awareness, or do I still need protection or some sort? I don't, because me, whatever I I feel, I just let it go. I it doesn't. I don't care if it's uh, physical or emotional or, uh, let's say, attacking from some other places. So, do you do you see? I need protection. Do you see attacks coming on? Uh, some or... some attacks from the lower realms. Uh, but that's everybody gets attacks. What what is it that you're trying to? Oh, what is it you're asking exactly? <laughs> well, I'm just thinking if I need if I need to do my some protections or I just do my kind of work. Well, yeah, do the normal protections, yes, but there seems to be there are some beings you just can't shut down. But yes, just do extra protection, yeah, if you feel comfortable with that, yes. <laughs> no, I I I feel that that. To, Doing protection is like uh, extra work for me, and I don't feel like. Yeah, just just continue on your day. Not you say not to really worry about it, really. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if you don't feel it's affecting you, not to worry about it, though. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. Much love. Thank you very much. Blessings. Okay. Blessings. Thank you. Up next, we have Ava. Hi, um, can you tell me how the rest of the year looks like for me? Uh, in what way exactly? <laughs> uh, just general. Well, there's only so much we can see. I mean, it feels like it's going to be the same as it is right now. 
I mean, you expect a cataclysm or something, or what is it that you're expecting exactly? Uh, yeah, that would be nice because nothing's been going on. <laughs> no, I don't feel like anything's going to change. It's going to be exactly as it is now. I mean, yeah, you'll do things a little bit differently than doing now, but other than that, we don't see much different, actually. <laughs> okay. Um, have I ever been abducted? Uh, yes, younger, yes, around five years old, yeah. By who? Uh, Zeta Energies, yeah. But I believe there's also plenty of energies there to heal that. But yeah, you've. I don't, I don't believe you always got along with the grays. <laughs> so there's a little bit of confusion between you and them. <laughs> so. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Yes, blessings. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Up oh, next, we've got Susan. Good evening. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, for my first question, I wondered if uh, there's still some unfinished business with my mother um, who passed away a few months ago. Uh, yes, a lot of the energies came after she passed away, a lot of her stuff started showing up. Yes. Now, yeah, it might take some time to clear it up. It's not making itself clear what exactly what it is, but yeah, it's just basically, yeah, as you say, unfinished business. Yeah, it's just her, her mental attacks. I feel or some of her depression mm -hmm. that she put on you, yeah. mm -hmm. restraints. Yeah, basically trying to control you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just. Um... I'll just be letting that go yes. as time moves yeah, just on. Forgiveness and this. Yeah. Well, forgiveness. yeah. Yeah. Okay. My second question is, do you have any messages for me? Uh, I mean, you are a, t a part of a good luck timeline to so just keep following what feels right for you. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Just, yeah. Your mother energy. Yeah. It's in the background. You will slowly let it go. There's still, you know, part of you might feel like you need to say something to her. You know, she's in spirit. I mean, if you need to say whatever you need to say to her, <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> she'll definitely <laughs> hear. At least she can handle it better now. But she couldn't handle it while she was here. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. She couldn't handle well, a lot when she was here, apparently. <laughs> yeah, she had a hard life. Yeah, but she didn't want to hear her truth either, her own truth, her own issues. She didn't want to hear about that. Boy, that's for sure. Yeah. You denial. nailed that. A life in denial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So will her next life be a little easier? No. <laughs> oh, shoot. Too bad. Well, you'll be there for her in some form. I don't think you'll be her kid or anything like that. Uh-huh. But you know her well, so you probably help her spiritually in some form. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Blessings to all. Blessings. Okay, very nice. Gotta find me my good luck timeline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, well, up last this evening is me. Thank you again, Dragons, for coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, for my first question, lately I've been noticing out of the corner of my vision this pulsating light. Uh, you'd think it'd probably be an effect from light bouncing off of my eyes if it wasn't for how intense it vibrates and stands out. So I'm curious whether this vibrating light is more than just a visual effect or if there is a subtle form of communication happening, maybe like a light code infusion. Yes. I ask, I ask because this is happening random, a lot more randomly and more often. Well, I feel like, yes, there's light beings that are talking to you from the higher dimensions. Some of them are coming from 12th dimension, it feels like. So it's like little sparkles of energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, kind of like there is a fairy energy coming there also. They're just, I feel like they're helping you lead your way to where you need to go to next. So, is that me seeing them in a sense or that yeah. they occupy that space and time there? Right, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So they're just keeping tabs on me and just kind of hanging around. So when I see them, they're, they're around me at that time. Well, yeah, it feels like they're there to direct you to what you need to be directed towards. Hey, I don't I don't see patterns when they show up, so maybe I, I got to place more emphasis when I do see these things and, you know, kind of sit with it and see if they want to open up a line of communication or... Yeah, eventually, it seems. They're just, first off, seeing if you can handle them being around, so... 
um, kind of used to already, like the idea of reptilians spying in on me and, you know, fairy yeah. beings around me, elementals and things yes. like that. So, yeah, I'm becoming more and more comfortable with the idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know. All right, very cool. Thank you for that. Um, for my second question, I'll just kind of leave it open. Uh, how are my healing abilities kind of developing kind of going forward? Uh, I've been having like a skin condition on my hand. I think I got bitten by a bug or something like that. And then it got real scaly and, uh, and cracked. And then like I was getting cuts and wounds in my hand and like in the cuts, little black specks were coming out of my cuts. So it was like, it was, uh, like expelling something out of me. But when, uh, Last night when I was putting my hands together in meditation and folding them over one another, I felt like a warm sensation. And when I, you know, looked at my hands after I was done, uh, the, the skin was like nice and smooth and healed out and a lot of the irritation had gone down. So I'm looking to see if there's any messages on that. Well, it feels like you're like a, a DNA infusion is what I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was feeling, too. Yeah. You got you got you got a slight upgrade. So it might show up as like a rash or some kind of irritation, but yeah, you're actually improving yourself. <laughs> yeah, because I never felt like that, that kind of warmness coming out of my yeah. hands before to that intensity. So I felt real nice. Yeah. So what, so because you've been, you know, what you've been weaving is, but living has been, you know, you, you know, you're, you're achieving your mission here. You know, you're doing, you know, what you signed up for and you're handling it well. So you're giving this infusion to, you know, as I like say payment, you can say you earned it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a blessing right now, but you know, no, I guess... it might not seem that way, but it will. I feel like you're more of your intuitive abilities become more sharper on certain subject matters. Maybe not everything or certain things are just no. Yeah, I'm starting to feel that just with like interpersonal relationships and like family yeah. members and stuff like that. I, they don't even have to say anything yet. They yeah. don't have to say anything. I just know what's going on. And the chemtrail energies, I feel like you're tapping more into that to diffuse it. Yeah, yeah. That's been ongoing that ever since I had my first activation. Uh, it was yeah. through the chemtrails. So uh, I keep that going, you know, as much yeah. as I can. So, but the reason for the chemtrail is a, na is a nanotechnology. Right. So it's there to deactivate that. The other stuff's not so bad. I mean, it's not great, but the nano is really, that's where the darkness really is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. And that was my initial, you know, I think the initial reaction of the anger of the, like the manipulation that was happening to me or not attempting to me, but on my family and around me and the people that I can't protect you know, in a sense, even from these little nanotechnologies. So I guess that's kind of always been my, my opposition or my motivation yeah. for the. Well, yeah, they push, you know, they push, you know, the level of free will here, but the nano is, is this. Is it's completely, own... Yeah. Completely intrusive. You know, it has yeah. no respect for sovereignty. It just goes yeah. and invades and takes. Yeah. They do want people here to, obviously not be healthy to even become, you know, almost mutant like. <laughs> we can right. see that with the you know, the health situation now. With this nanotechnology, do you see us being able to infuse it into our DNA in a sense so that we're able to interface with technology going forward? And that's the plan, but you see it becoming more want. of a yeah, to see it becoming more yeah. of an organic kind of connection where it's well, actually no. Well for some, yes. But from others, they don't need it. A lot of people don't no. need it. Yeah, there's this taboo between organic and you know, you know technology and things like that, AI and and, and the soul. Yeah, you know, as I guess because we're such a like a Frankenstein of all these different races right. here, I was wondering if that would happen with technology as well. Would we be able to successfully incorporate no. that? But no, it's I don't not... believe there's a, that's ever a positive energy. That's it just. It's just not, some will do it, but yeah, most won't. Yeah. yeah, I think because that's the real war right there, you know, the, yeah. you know, so it's, it'd be nice in the future to have better relations with technology instead of them trying to control us, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a pie in the sky kind of idea, you know, well, maybe. Idea, 
Well, the idea for your future is less technology. Right. Yeah, that's me personally. That's what I agree with. But I'm just like, this has to be here for a reason. How are we going to end this war? You know, how are we going to come to terms in peace amicably? You know, it's got to be in some form or fashion. The transhumanism is going to be accepted by some. But yeah, as a whole, you know, the power of the humanity is not in the technology. It's within, you know, so. All right. What the Thank you again. Blessings, Dragons. Blessings to you. All right.